right, good morning to you. It's 842 at iFiber One. We focus on Shelton Thursdays at this time, brought to you by our Community Credit Union. And I've got two great guests in studio this morning. Senior planner for the uh, city of Shelton, it is Jason Dose and Andy. Ar- well, I haven't even turned your microphone up yet, Jason. Sorry. Jeez, come on. And then Andy Arnest is in here as well. And good morning to you both. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Good. Excellent. We survived the walk. There was no rain. No rain. Andy, good seeing you <laughs> last night at the after hours. Was Likewise. that your first one coming to one of those? First one, yeah. Yep. Pretty nice thing to do. Yeah, it was meet, great. meet with folks yeah, around the community. Great people. Uh, all right, we have got some things to talk about. Let's first start with you, Jason, and the uh, Eagle Point annexation. Let's Eagle Point annexation. It, it involves, I'll tell you the backstory Please. a little bit. So, the uh, Port of Shelton Marina, mm-hmm. now out at the end of Pine Street off SR3 uh, by the railroad bridge. Um, it's what we refer to as split jurisdictionally. Part of it's in the city, part of it's in the county, and that complicates matters for their permitting. Because as you know, or may not know, anything you do in the water or over the water is very complicated from mm-hmm. a permit standpoint. There's a ro- lot of resource issues, water quality issues, yada, yada, yada. Um, that's an official term. Yeah, I know it is. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they've struggled getting permits historically because they have to go through, it's, it's bad enough you know, as easy as we try to make it, it is a complicated process. It's bad enough going through one jurisdiction, but to go through two to do the same action can be frustrating, to say the least. So anyway, Port of Shelton applied to the county last year to expand the UGA out into the uh, out into Oakland Bay. These are mostly water areas we're talking about. It does include Eagle Point. I'll get to that. Um, they... So they applied to the county to expand the UGA, which the county did, and then the Port and Department of Natural Resources, it's kind of a joint application by the two, applied to the city to annex. So it's about 70, give or take, it's about 72 acres of mostly water areas Mm -hmm. in the port and kind of in a maybe 50-yard wide band across Oakland Bay out to um, Eagle Point, which is on the south side of Oakland Bay. So we started processing the application, and you know, due to staffing shortfalls, I always got to say this. You know, this has taken way too long, and it's it's my fault. I'll be honest. Um, due to staffing changes, it took us a little longer to get to the point where we um, gave the application to the county auditor to certify. You have to actually there's it's a it's an RCW required process that they certify the application to make sure the property owners are in fact the property owners who have applied. So you're not annexing somebody's territory sure. unwittingly. Yeah. So they certified that, but the problem was during that process the city acquired Eagle Point. We got that through a grant for conservation purposes. So then the the county contacts me and says, "Well, wait a minute." These aren't the majority property owners of the land value because we have the only upland piece, Mm -hmm. which has more value than the water pieces. So, yeah, we can't certify the application. And I'm like, oh, you know, oh, yeah, that's ours. So it necessitated the city to sign on to the application, which we did. We finally got the application certified. Now we're going to public hearing to physically annex. And what that means is take that property into city limits. So it would put the port, port's marina just into city jurisdiction, which will reduce their permitting Mm -hmm. headaches, as it were. And then it brings the city's acreage, it's about 12 acres around Eagle Point and its associated tidelands, into city limits. So it's, I'm not expecting much in the way of controversy over this. It's a a logical annexation, in my opinion. So Uh, benefits to the citizens of Shelton include? Well, I think it's going to help the Port of Shelton do some improvements and expand in the future. Okay. So uh, some of the concepts the Port of Shelton's talking about are uh, doing a commercial dock um, to the north, I believe. I haven't seen any conceptual drawings. This is all just literally talking and conceptualizing in your head. Um, a commercial dock on the north end to kind of consolidate some of the aquaculture uses that are going on down there. So what that would hopefully do then is open up recreational opportunities, you know, more um, visitor boating slips, maybe some more open space along the waterfront itself. Now on the south end, Eagle Point, in the, in the longer term, we don't have any funding right now, but on the longer term, the city's considering doing um, some very low impact, maybe trail or boardwalk access to the water to potentially put in something like a, uh, you know, a kayak put in or something okay. for Hammersley and that. I mean, we'd, we'd of course go through a very public process for that and kind of query the public about what kind of 
improvements they want to see. But that, from a staff standpoint, we think that might not be a bad idea because it really was that that property was acquired for conservation purposes, which means it's it's very intact from an environmental standpoint. We don't want to jeopardize that, and but we do, you know, have a lack of water access in this area. So. If we can find a way we can provide some access, very low impact, mm-hmm. uh, we'd like to be able to do that. That would be nice. It would be really cool. All yeah. right, Andy, let's talk with you a little bit. First, let's start with uh, some of the results that you have seen from uh, that Survey Monkey thing about the uh, railroad road diet. Sure. We talked about that last week with uh, yeah, you and Ryan. About that. Yeah, so that just closed yesterday. And we had a great response from that. We had just over 350 responses, wow. which is quite a few Yeah. Um, in comparison to some of the surveys we've tried to do in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, that, you know, that was outstanding. And so right now we're compiling that information, um, those results from that. And then the members of the staff are going to be presenting that to the visioning committee today. Okay. Um, they're going to be collaborating with those guys. And then there'll be a final presentation that's made to the commission this coming Monday. And that's uh, the next commission meeting yep, on Monday? Up, yep, it's, uh, it's 6 o'clock. Looks like there's a couple of uh, job openings in the city as well. You can find this as well on sheltonwa.gov, you know, the city's website. And a great new look to the website, also on social media. But there are some job announcements. And what are some of those ones that we see? Yeah, so we have two open right now currently. Um, the first one is we're hiring for a city clerk and public records um, officer. Um, they're going to be in charge. Really, the primary focus on that will be the records management for the city. They're um, wanting to hire somebody to do some analysis on that and look for ways to be more efficient, streamline that Good. those processes, so that you know members of the public can more easily access um, the information. Um, also in charge of some of the uh, uh, customer service aspects of the city, so things like utility billing and again looking for ways to improve that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The uh, the second one is going to be for a code enforcement and community services officer that will be within the police department. Um, someone that primarily is focused on code enforcement go out kind of goes back to that cleanup we talked about last week as well. Um, that go out and respond to you know complaints and violations and that and help clean clean up the city in, in those ways. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then the second part of that is the community service aspect. Um, one of the major things is going to be managing the animal shelter. Yeah. Um, okay. And those new, those two new things that we have with the, you know lost dogs and, and adopting animals out. So that's what they'll be focused on. Seems like the code enforcement has uh, have a renewed, fresh look to it. As uh, Lieutenant Fiola and Chief Moody were in the other day talking about this as well as with the uh, animal services. So is that kind of a new push around the city to, you know, try to. I don't want to say, like, take pride in the city, but, sure. you know, just enforce the rules that are on the books. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a push that we're, we're all going for, uh, okay. just to kind of clean up some of those things that have maybe maybe not been forgotten, but just maybe refocused. Yeah, so. with, with limited staffing, like you were mentioning exactly. at the other side, too, Jason. Absolutely. Uh, th- this is a subject matter dear to my heart. It really course, is. I know uh, it code is. Enforcement. Um, we've, what I've seen, and it's, it's not exclusive to Shelton. I mean, I've worked in several jurisdictions, and where we see a lot of the code enforcement struggles primarily are with, unfortunately, absentee landlords, you know, people that don't live locally. Typically, in my opinion, what I find is they don't pay attention as much to their property. If they're if they're getting their rent, it's out of sight, out of mind. Sure. And Basically, we need to remind them, hey, you are ultimately responsible for this property. And I've been acting as code enforcement officer in the interim. And, you know, a picture speaks a thousand words, people say. And that's the way I've been operating. Just take photos of the site. Let them know we have these minimum property maintenance codes. And they're primarily to it's it is a matter of pride. It's 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 but but it's also to encourage neighborhood investment, because what I hear a lot is People will find these properties online. You know, they don't know Shelton. They think it's, you know, a nice town. They, they look at some pictures. They look at stuff. They maybe drive through. And then they look at these properties. They go, wow, this is a great deal. I could I could fix this up. I could live here. And then they turn around and they, they look at the neighborhood. And they're like, geez, you know, what's going on over here? Yeah. And I've actually heard not only realtors but also people that are looking for houses skip on properties, not because they don't like the house, not because they don't like the price, they're a little concerned about the neighborhood. They're like, oh, wow, if I invest in this property, am I going to get my return? Because ultimately, you know, you, you live in a place not just for the house, but you expect to get a return someday. Yeah. And if you're looking at the neighborhood going, hmm, I'm not sure I'm going to get a return, you know, that's that's troubling to me. And we're not, I always kind of joke with people, we're not looking for better homes and gardens houses. We're just looking for nuisances. And what those are, just things like a bunch of car parts out in a yard, a, a, a partially deconstructed vehicle on jacks in a front yard, 
trash piled in a corner. I mean, it's not... We're, we're looking for these sorts of yeah. things right now, and that's what I'm dealing with. So. People responsive when you send them You know, notes? in a large part, they are. I, I got to say, a lot of landlords are stepping up. They're requiring their tenants to clean it up because the tenants are the ones doing it. Yeah. But they, they openly admit, wow, I haven't been by the property in six months. I had no idea. And I just say, hey, we're going to be a lot more aggressive about this in the future. We are working towards a situation, hopefully, where we can directly find that there's not a court process we need to go through. We're hoping, you know, one morning you don't comply you start getting fined. Wow. And okay. unfortunately, it's come to that yeah. because we don't have the staffing to be working with you know, people for six months a year to just get them to clean up something that would probably take three hours. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, keep us updated on that. Jason Dose, Senior Planner, Andy Ornest, the new Communications and Economic Development Officer. And you can find more on their social media sites, the Twitter, Facebook, also YouTube. Thanks for coming in, guys. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. To see you. Appreciate it.